Hello everyone, welcome back, and today we're going to be covering the Explodatorium for the 80% route using the Skeletal Sentry for Spectre of Torment. Now, although I never had a lot of trouble in ever completing this stage for runs, I would say that it is going to be one of the most difficult stages to optimize because of the fact that it actually has global plot cycles and global fire cycles that we need to be worrying about. We're going to be using Jojen Rush in a couple of spots, but thanks to the efforts of Taiwan Ninja, Tolu, Azula, Egg, and myself, uh, throughout the stage, just in grinding it out repeatedly. Many tricks have been discovered that make it much easier to catch the earliest possible cycle, at least for the first pot lid room. That said, once we do get the early cycle in the first pot lid room, there's still more work to be done if you don't want to actually lose time overall. Now, using rail mail is very effective in countering the effects of water in this stage, which is one of the unique elements of Explodatorium this time around. And if you've managed to keep up pace, up to this point of the stage as I have, then you should be really early on the on the potlet cycle. You'll actually see the center one pop up, which means that you have a little bit of time to kill. Doing the stage again and again is important because you need to be able to understand if you ever make a small mistake, how much time did that cost me and how is it going to affect the potlet cycles that are coming up. Once you make it to this long water room, you've basically cleared the first half where pot cycles aren't going to interfere with what you're doing. That said, I just did a small ledge hop, and that's actually probably going to cost me later on, because there's fire cycles coming up that I have to work against. But first, we're fighting the Alchemister, and thanks to a method used by Speedfrog initially, we can easily kill the Alchemister before he becomes a problem. Now, depending on how you've been playing up to this point, these fire pillars could either be coming up or going down, they could be just fading. And if you cannot get through damageless as you get over the first set of uh, fire pillars, then you might as well wait for the next cycle. Otherwise, you're just going to be repeatedly taking damage as you try and beat the next cycle, and it'll, it'll just never happen. Now, as you enter this room, if you don't have the mana for Judgment Rush, then make sure you pick up that darkness. Otherwise, just mash as soon as you enter. And in this room, I use Judgment Rush this time around, but it's actually optional whether or not you want to do that. You can actually get through without using Judgment Rush. And it's sometimes better to save the darkness because you can then, as I did as a backup emergency, I use Judgment Rush twice, uh, once to get the rat and then once to get the uh, plague minion. Now this fight actually turned out perfectly, so I was really surprised that I got this on my first try. I'm going to have to show you what might happen if you end up with a, uh, an unlucky teleport pattern. But yeah, if you, if you happen to get some good fortune here on Plague Knight, he can literally just explode before he has a chance to do anything. So as we start this stage over, I need to stress the importance of pot and fire cycles because they'll make the difference between making the stage survivable and optimal. From the moment we load in, even as we twirl our sight, the stage has already begun the global cycles. Now the first room is nothing special, just make sure you don't get caught ledge hopping as you use the lantern to jump over the gap. But you can see as I entered this room, I was in the air and that's so that I could be mashing out Judgment Rush to try and get it as early as I possibly could. Saving as many frames up front will guarantee that you can have a slight mistake here or there later on. Now whether or not the Judgment Rush kills the Beetle, you should land on top of the fire traps. Just make sure that instead of grinding, you just jump straight up, target that dirt block with a slash through the wall, and then jump over to the other fire traps on the other side. Now optionally, as you turn back around, you could do a slash as you are doing the ledge hop over the fire trap directly above where Spectre is right now. Uh, that'll save you some frames, but it's also putting you at risk to not get your grinding animation started up, which is much slower overall. Just drop straight down, no big deal, and then once you get into the next room, again, you want to be mashing Judgment Rush as hard as you can, get it as early as possible. It'll target the Beetle and actually throw you up onto the next fire trap, so that actually having to wall hop at all. Now in this next room, there's a neat little trick that Taiwan Ninja actually came up with that he was able to find while doing New Game Plus for Explodatorium. First we're going to jump over this gap and then start cutting a little bit early so that you don't accidentally bonk into the pink skeleton and so that you don't accidentally bonk into the dirt blocks. And then Taiwan found that as you're cutting this next skeleton, if you just stay grinding, slash at him on the ground, and then jump and do a dash attack really quickly, he'll actually be slightly above you, which means you'll get a dash attack all the way up instead of just into the fire trap or against the wall. Remember not to hold right as you're flying upwards so you don't ledge hop, and then continue grinding afterwards. And once you get to the center of those two dirt bricks, make sure that you tap left and then jump so that you fall cleanly straight down. Now once you drop down, be ready to attack because as soon as you land in the water, a pink Skelebro will be coming up and you will bonk right into him if you don't have your scythe already out. You only need to attack him once to pass through him, make sure you jump over the gap, and then jump again so that you can get on the other side of this pink Skelebro and bounce off the back of his head up onto the wall. You should barely have to do any climbing whatsoever. 
you'll be getting a small ledge hop and that's okay because you need to wait for this uh, platform to lower down just a little bit and once it's low enough that you can get onto it I usually just walk off onto it you can then from there just grind and jump over the gap without bonking into the wall now once you see that you can land on the platform go ahead and grind and then you can just do a small hop to clear the gap and then another pink skelebro is coming up Make sure you jump as you approach him, bounce off of his head, go to the left wall, and then quickly hop off of that wall over onto where the water is coming from. Now Taiwan did prove it was possible to once again get the same up magical dash attack off that pink Skelebro, which is a little bit faster, but you'll see that it's not necessary to catch any earlier pot cycles. Now once you've made it past the end of that first long gauntlet, if you've been keeping pace, then you should only have to do a short hop to make it over this gap. You won't bonk into the platform that's coming down. From here, as we skate into the next room, just make sure that you hop twice, once to get a decent chunk of the way in, and then once to make it onto that uh, climbable wall. And then you're doing two up dash attacks off the lantern as it swings to the left. This is so that we can be as high as we possibly can get on that ladder, so that we can start the screen transition immediately. Now in this room, I found more success in getting a grind off on that first little ledge that you climb up onto. And then as you land on that center platform, just make sure you grind a little bit against the current and make sure you get a clean jump with no ledge hopping as you reach the platform at the checkpoint. Now once you've made it to this point, you'll be able to tell what you're kind of dealing with based on whether or not these pot lids are coming up, they're shaking, or coming on their way down. But as you enter, you should be in the air so that you can get as early as possible of a judgment rush on the chompy and then skate into the next room. And finally, we can begin to see how exactly the pot lids are going to look. Now, the way the previous room turned out indicates that I can make it across this gap, but that I shouldn't be holding forward, otherwise I'll skate into the open pot lid and take damage. Just casually hop over the falling pot lid and make sure you get in position to ride the second set up. Azulag found a small little time save. If you're a little quick on this side, then once you get onto the bottom set of pot lids, you can actually make it up before the next set pops up so you'll be able to start your next grind off as it's falling down. Once the lids reach about their apex, just do a short hop so that you start grinding as quickly as possible. Then jump when you're about center and get two clean cuts. You'll either hit the chompy or you won't, but just make sure that you're breaking the stone brick, and then finish the chompy off as you clear the stone bricks and skate into the next area. And yes, you should be rearing back as you start up your grind so that the fire trap doesn't trigger as you're moving directly over it. Now as soon as you mash Judgment Rush, this Chompy should be your target. It should be coming into the screen as soon as you start to fall off the ledge. And then once you do get over to where the Chompy is, you'll see some Plague Rats. Plague Rats like to jump as you approach them. You can still get a down dash attack off of them, and it's very tricky to avoid getting damaged by them. You won't be able to get a dash attack off them at all once you've hit them. So I like to damage boost just to get it out of the way and make sure that I can get through this section without having to worry about um, rising pot lids or the spiky pot covers. Now it is possible to skate past the second rat without taking damage, but then once you get down here, this pot lid is still going to be coming up. So you're more than likely going to get hit one way or another. This is just the easier of the two options, but it is possible, just incredibly difficult. Now on the screen in the right, you can see that they're starting Judgment Rush at about the same time, but on the right you're going to see that instead of taking the damage boost after the dash attack downwards, I continue grinding, and with a wall time slash, you can chop that dirt block out of the way. The problem is, is that I still wasn't able to beat this pot cycle, so I had to turn back before I was crushed. Now, I'm sure if I had gotten there just a bit sooner, I probably could have at least damage boosted and gotten underneath this whole mess. But still, by being there even slightly earlier, in this next screen, you'll see that I was able to just barely jump over the pot lid before it was able to jump up and, and hit me with the spikes. I still landed on the pot lid, which was uh, honestly kind of a miracle. But, you know, I walked straight off and then I was able to uh, slightly cut this cycle by a little bit. Alternatively, since we have the darkness for it, you could just judgment rush as soon as you enter the room. It's a little bit slower, but at least you're guaranteed to not have to deal with pot cycles. Now normally as you enter this room, you're just going to be doing a slash as you approach the wall, and this way you won't stick to it and get to continue holding left. Under normal conditions, if you see that the pot lid is rising, so long as you get right up to it, stop for just a moment with a small hop backwards, and then start your grind back up again, you shouldn't get hit by any of the pot spider's projectiles. You'll actually be able to avoid all of them and still keep going relatively at a continuous pace. Now in this next room we're going to see something unfortunate happen, so I decided to leave it in here just to keep it in as a warning. You want to cut through the slime and then do two up dash attacks on the birds, but the slime decided to jump forward and you want to be doing a judgment rush right here, and it would normally target the slime that's on the right, but because of that hop, the judgment rush targeted the slime on the left. 
So again, this is what this should be looking like as you land in this room, this uh, checkpoint room for the long water room. Uh, you hop over onto where the slime is, you cut and grind through it, and then as you hop, you're going to do an up dash attack on the first macabre, and then one more on the second macabre, and then as soon as you see the other one on screen, you can judge and rush, and you should target him. And the other slime that was behind you shouldn't get in the way of that. After landing from the Judgment Rush, you're going to do a small hop, and then you want to do a large jump. And the reason why is because you move faster when you're not fighting the current. And I didn't hop large enough, but if I had, the Macabre that spawned actually would have spawned a little further away, and the potion wouldn't have landed on the platform that I was grinding on. I recognized that that hop was lacking, so I actually jumped a little bit sooner, but that meant that I had to ledge hop to get over onto the small lone pillar there. Once you clear that pillar, you actually want to stay fighting against the current instead of hopping, and that's because if you try and hop, you'll just end up landing on top of the pink Skelebro. So instead, just wait until you're close to where he'll spawn, and then jump clear over him. With this Plague Minion, you actually want to fight against the current and just do three attacks while grinding towards him. By the time you've done your third attack, you won't actually have to do a dash attack to prevent yourself from bonking. The water is actually pushing you back fairly hard, so you can just do a short hop to get over the ledge, and you won't have to go flying into the corner of the screen. And then if you're really not feeling comfortable with the amount of health that you have, then you can go ahead and pick up that dinner plate full of food. There's only one damage boost that we have to take for the rest of the stage, the rest of it is pretty much avoidable. Now coming up on the mini boss of the stage, the Alchemister. He's easily dealt with using the Skelebro, but we have a way to speed up the fight even more. Now after you've thrown him, make sure you start grinding to the right, and you want to get two cuts while fighting the current. Try not to start your cuts too close to him, because by the time you finish the second cut, you'll barely have enough time to turn back around without bonking into the wall. You'll then proceed to do four cuts while facing left. Do not hold forward, you're just literally slashing at him and fighting the current with your pushback from the slashes. After four slashes to the left, you want to turn to the right and do two more slashes, and then you won't be close enough to do any more attacks on him. So at this point, you want to hop, start another grind towards the right, and just repeat two slashes as you pass through him, turn left just as you're about to get to the wall, then do four more slashes to the left, followed by two more slashes to the right. The Alchemizer only has 23 HP, so at this point, either your attack or the Skeletal Sentry's next shot is going to finish doing him in. That said, he'll probably have gotten a red potion off at this point, so you're going to have to jump to make sure you avoid the flame. Once again, here's the fight at full speed. Toss Skelebro, 1-2, 1-2, 3-4, 2 to the right. Start grinding, 1-2, 1-2, 3-4, 2 to the right. And then any old attack will finish him off. So once you're done with the Alchemizer, the next room is a long series of fire traps that are on a global cycle. Now as I entered the room, I already noticed that fire pillars were coming down, and that I wouldn't have possibly have gotten over to the wall with fire traps before another flame came out. So there's no sense in taking that damage. You're never going to be able to beat an extra fire cycle by constantly taking damage boosts as you try and navigate through this area. You can see that I was basically at the top of the ladder when this fire pillar struck me, so you know that I'm going to catch one of the earliest possible cycles once I've entered this room at least. In getting a clean jump over that pink Skelebro, I'll be able to beat the next fire trap before it has a chance to strike me from the walls. I'll do a small hop and then I'll be able to jump upwards chasing after the next fire trap should be disappearing as you get to it so you can keep going without really stopping or delaying yourself much. Now once you get up to this small drop, just jump and then wait until the Chompy is on screen, do a Judgment Rush, and then after you've done your Judgment Rush, you'll have some invincibility as you're landing, so you can actually go ahead, you won't get hit by the Fire Pillar, just make sure you turn left, start a grind, and then jump to the ladder. If for whatever reason you don't happen to have any darkness, there is a small pickup here, but otherwise you should have more than enough to just spam Judgment Rush as soon as you get into the room. After your Judgment Rush finishes, hold left so that you start wall climbing, but then cut immediately so that you drop. This will also reduce the hang time that you would have had from a Judgment Rush. Destroy the ground beneath you with a few hops, cut the stone brick in front of you, and then as you walk off of it, you want to get a hop and then start just jumping up the wall instead of using the ladder. It's a little bit faster. There's a couple of different ways to do the last long room in Explodatorium, and you can start by just mashing Judgment Rush, which will target the Beto, and if you wait it just slightly, then you'll be able to clear the gap and make it onto the platform with the breakable wall and the two dirt blocks. However, if you start grinding and cutting, you're very likely to bonk into one of them and lose some time. And if you took as much damage as I did, you'll want to break open the dinner plate before you continue going. You'll notice that in breaking that dinner plate, I also spent a little time there to avoid running into a potion that was coming out of the wall. And you'll notice that, very strangely enough, I managed to catch onto that ledge as I was doing this hop. I actually intended to land down below, uh, but you want to judgment rush as soon as you see the route otherwise. 
Now you'll notice that as I'm judgment rushing this rat, he faces left briefly, and sometimes when you do this, the rat will not be blown to the right but to the left, but because I saw that he was blown to the right, I reacted by using judgment rush to target the plague minion, and this way I didn't get damaged by the rat's attack, end up in a situation that would have been kind of wild and out of my control. Same long room, and as you can see I decided not to do judgment rush, but it basically balances out to be the same type of room. And then I did end up on the bottom, I did Judgment Rush on the rat, he swung to the left, so I just grinded straight across. If you need some food after all that, there's some on the floor behind the checkpoint, but as I'm getting to this last room here, I do a small hop so that I can get some gravity rolling as I jump off. It just barely cuts the corner and saves a little bit of time. Otherwise you can just grind straight off and it won't make a difference in the fight. So here comes Plague Knight, I suggest you have your Skeletal Sentry ready. The fight will start once the music starts to reach its little crescendo for the intro. At this point you want to tap, jump, and throw your Skelebro at the same time, and this way you'll have more movement to get into the corner. You'll want to get 4 attacks on Plague on the ground, and then jump and do 1 dash attack to avoid getting damaged by the first potion that he throws. With this dash attack, I like to put myself in the corner and then take a moment to assess where he teleports to. I saw that he was on top of my sentry, so I immediately detonated my sentry, and even luckier than that, he was actually closest to me on the right, so I just got into position to start wailing on him in the corner. He's already at half health, and once he reaches about 4 full hearts, he'll start to do his desperation move to cover the room in bats. He's going to try and disappear, so I try and get as many attacks on him as I can. I was very fortunate enough that I was able to defeat him before he got away, so this is actually one of the better kills that I could have shown you guys. In this fight, we'll show what happens if you get slightly less fortunate on his uh, teleportation. Always starts out the same way, throw a Skelebro and get in the corner, do some attacks on him. And this time the real plague spawned further to the left, the fake ones always had red potions in their hand, instead of the blue ones that the real plague carried. I didn't get to deal quite as much damage as I would have liked to before Plague got away from me. But still not bad overall, I managed to finish him off with a couple more dash attacks, and I was very fortunate that my Skeletor actually dealt with the two clones right away. So once more, the good fight at full speed. Throw your Skeletor, get in the corner, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Detonate, react accordingly, I got back in the corner, and then just started mashing my heart out. Now that we've finished Explodatorium, we've unlocked the Darkness Wisp that it offers, so we can go and buy it. Now there is a slightly different route if you wanted to do this game with only 4 Darkness. It would technically be a little more efficient and faster, but it's also a lot harder to do. You have to be more conservative with your rushes and your, your Darkness use in general. Make sure you don't accidentally- oh. Hi, Baz. Yes. Yes. Okay. Bye. Okay, make sure you don't accidentally go into the planes as you're heading towards the stranded ship on our next episode. Thank you for watching. Stay spooky.